Good morning. Today is Monday, September 14th, and here's your daily devotion for today. Today's devotion comes from a very familiar section of the Bible, a very familiar verse, in fact. It is John 3, 13 through 17. And before I start, I just thought it was really funny because yesterday I happened to be watching some uh, football and that's one of the things that you see in the stands, um, usually kind of in the end zone sometimes after somebody scores a touchdown and there's a bunch of signs. And without a doubt, you always see the sign, John 3, 16. And sometimes I have to wonder, does that person or an athlete, do they really know and understand that story? Or is it just so popular that people just use it? So here's the verse, and then we'll talk more about the backstory because I did a little bit of research on it. Jesus said to Nicodemus, no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Okay, I'm going to read it one more time, and then we're going to talk about the backstory a little bit. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has ascended into, the, into heaven except for the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent into the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So obviously the part that we have heard numerous times and that we see so often on billboards or posters is the section that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. And we all know that that is an extremely powerful and important verse. And we know the significance of it. We know that God sent his son to die for our sins and to suffer on the cross so that as many mess ups as we have, we might be forgiven. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to look into the couple verses before that to understand where this came from. And the part I found interesting was the section that says, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent into the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. And so what I found out was that that actually comes from an Old Testament story where Jesus's people were being tortured in the wilderness by a serpent. And Moses actually took a staff and put a serpent head on it. And the, the story behind that was if you looked into that, then you would be, you would be saved, you would be freed. Um, and really what that is supposed to mean is that there's something bigger out there. There's something bigger for us to, to love and understand and have faith in, and that's God. And there's more than just what we do from day to day. There's this underlying um, sense of being, uh, being one of God's people that really helps us and drives that. And I, I can only imagine as a professional athlete, as I am not one, that some people may know that backstory and people must understand that even though they're working hard and they're these amazing athletes, there's some sort of driving force behind their faith that may help them and they may help them perform at a higher level. And I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. Maybe you believe that. Um, maybe some of the athletes do or do not. But it's just kind of an interesting concept for us to think about, especially in the way that we hear that familiar verse. Let's pray. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. To those who look upon the cross, grant your wisdom, healing, and eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.